G4 Lite easy, it was G4 complicated. So you experienced a modern world. Yeah. What did you think of it? About a year ago, I managed to visit the Amish country in Ohio. This visit amazed me so much that I made a video about it and shared it with you. This Amish story amazed you as well and provoked thousands of questions and comments. Well, it is time to dig deeper and tell the story of the Amish in detail. Only this time we will see the wonderful and diverse region of Lancaster in Pennsylvania, which is the very first Amish settlement in America. Lancaster may seem like a village at first, but it actually is a large city with a diverse population, art galleries and even a Dutch Wonderland amusement park right on the edge of the Amish village. It seemed to me that everyone who comes to Amish country is going straight here. But we will go the other way and examine the surroundings. Spoiler alert, everything around here is very historical and very beautiful. Let me introduce Ephrata, a town with a population of 13,000 people but with great charisma and this strange construction. This is because it is a monastery that had been founded in 1732 and has remained practically in its original state to this day. Faithful lived here on a permanent basis. One of the sources says that the daily routine included one vegetarian lunch a day and a six-hour sleep from 9 to midnight and from 2 to 5 in the morning. A two-hour window was needed to observe the descent of Christ, why he had to descend after midnight and whether these observations were successful wasn't specified. We go a bit further to the neighboring town of Lidditz. Here, as a true European, I felt like my soul opened up in a different way, while hanging out on the main street with all these shops and cafes, which remind of some tiny German village. And there is a reason to it, since it was the German settlers who first founded this town. Lidditz is very small. It is home to only about 9,000 people, and outside the main street, there only are some rich gated estates, some more simple houses and there is this lovely park which I would call the city of ducks there's so many well you can see it for yourself I got a little stuck watching their fights dates and show time in the river and spent at least an hour here Here's an important side note. Moving between towns here is also a whole event because Pennsylvania is rich in historical covered bridges. Of course, it's a bit scary to pass through many of them because they look very shabby, while others are simply hard to drive on because they're one-sided. Of course, what to complain about if they were built almost 200 years ago? One can only marvel that they're alive, beautiful, functional and maintained in proper condition as historical sites. And one more gem that I stumbled upon is located almost next door in the city of Strasbourg. Have you noticed that all the names sound very German? This is the Strasbourg Railroad and Museum. I didn't have this place on my list, but I saw a steam locomotive passing parallel to the road, which looked more like a train from Hogwarts. And per my usual reaction, I followed it. There was no Hogwarts on the way, but a few kilometers away, it stopped at this charming train station. This is the oldest operating railroad in America. This is not the first one, I believe the first one was in Ohio, but this is the oldest still operating one. It only is about 7 to 8 kilometers and goes straight to paradise. 
Yes, you heard it right. The city is called Paradise. So in about 45 minutes, you can get to Paradise, spend some time in there and come back on the same train. At some point in history, this railway was Strasbourg's only connection to the outside world. And this short railroad led to a larger station with long distance trains. take the train. I didn't buy the ticket because I wasn't planning on going to another town. It would probably take another, I don't know, two hours to get there and to go back. The railroad isn't that long. It's about seven to eight kilometers only. Um, but still, I didn't want to leave my car in here. But if you guys are here by any chance at some point, make sure to buy the ticket and <laughs> take this train just for fun. It's a really amazing experience to be here. I feel like I'm a lady from 1800s. I am not. I don't look like. So this is the Amish village with horses, carriages, buggies, bonnets, authentic hats for 40 bucks, handmade kilts, and a lifestyle that is perhaps very foreign to the rest of the modern world. I have a lot to tell you, but first, here is, as we call it, the first-hand information. I asked an Amish girl who works at the countryside roadstain store a few questions, and needless to say how grateful I am that she agreed to have this mini-interview and share some insights. If I want to become Amish, do you accept people? What should I do to become Amish? Or you have to be born Amish to um, be in this community? You don't have to be born Amish. Pretty much anyone can become Amish as long as you like follow our rules and everything. You would have to go with our church for maybe about a year before you can join. Okay. So, and there's like a test or something? Or you can... um, it's not really a test. It's more like so you couldn't have a license, you would have to dress the same as us, um, no electricity in the houses, things like that, and no technology. No, no technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're familiar with social media and everything? Yeah, we do have a period of time in teenage years that we are allowed to have a little more freedom to, I guess, explore the world and to decide if we want to stay on or not. So in that period of time, we would be allowed to have like a cell phone. Okay, and how long is that period? It's from plus? 16 until you decide to get baptized. Okay. Most times you get baptized around 18 or 19. Right around there. Okay. So. Have you gone through that period? Yes. So you experienced a modern world. Yeah. What did you think of it? You, you didn't want to stay, obviously. I mean, it's definitely fun to have the freedom, but I like this kind of life. It's a lot more simple and reserved, and the communities are very tight, yeah. so... Yeah. What do you think of social media? Do you think it's good um, or bad? Is it distracting? I think if you use it for the right things, it's good. Yeah. Like calling and texting, but all the extra stuff, I honestly don't think it's good. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's too much bad things that come with technology, and that's all the kids want to do nowadays. So yeah, you have to healthy. be very selective and filter what you yeah, yeah, consume definitely. or not. I got some honey, wildflower, raw, unprocessed. I got a moisturizer for dry skin. Let's see, all the ingredients are natural, only flowers and um, all natural. We'll see how it works. And I got something to eat, a banana bread, which looks very delicious. It was really nice talking to her and I was super happy that she agreed to speak on camera, which is amazing. I asked many other questions off camera and one of which was if every Amish or if many Amish are okay with talking to, let's say, foreigners or people from outside of their community, English people. That's what they call everyone who is not Amish. And she said that that depends on the group, that totally depends on the community. And some people are more open and 
modern, if I may say. And they're okay with talking to others and sharing their culture and whatever. But others, and there are many of those others who are very conservative and they wouldn't speak to to anyone. They, they wouldn't like, actually, the intrusion. Another question that I asked is whether they are trying to spread their culture. On one hand, it's obvious that they are not because they are not really talking to anyone, right? So obviously they're not trying to spread any word about their culture. But on the other hand, here in Pennsylvania, they offer tours, they offer um, buggy rides, they offer many different spots where you can learn about Amish culture. So it seems to me more open. It seems to me that they're actually trying to share their story. And um, I asked her if they are trying or if they want to spread their culture. And she said that, no, we're not trying to do anything. We just live this simple life and we enjoy it. On the other hand, she said, we, may be trying to spread our religion. We believe in Jesus Christ, we have this faith, and the religion, yes, we would love to, or we're trying to share it and spread the word about it. And um, yes, that's it. This is a deeply religious group formed somewhere in Switzerland. Initially, it was the Mennonite church. Later, a group of people decided that they needed to live with even greater restrictions and organized kind of a brunch, Amish. Both the Amish and Mennonites have the same religion, but different lifestyles. Due to differences of opinion with European Catholics, both of them were persecuted and were forced to look for a better place to live, which turned out to be Pennsylvania. The main difference in the faith that bothered Catholics is baptizing people at a conscious age. The Amish make their decision to join the church on their own in the teenage period from 17 to 19 years old. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why these communities stay so strong and dedicated. People make a conscious choice. They say that nowadays there are no Amish settlements left in Europe. So I just got a ticket to the Amish farm and house which is right here behind me. I'm gonna go in right now. There is a guided tour around the house and the farm with a guide who is very knowledgeable and gonna share a lot of um, stories and history and a lot of things about Amish culture. I'm so excited. I'm sure I'm gonna learn a lot of new things and I'm gonna share it with you guys. Just notice how civilization took over the territories. Here's the house of the Amish and once a former village and here's the Target supermarket with hundreds of cars in the parking lot. Here at the Amish house they have original buggies, a farm, these are the scooters that you can try to ride. By the way, this is the only permitted transportation after buggies. Why not a bicycle? Because you can go too far on a bicycle. For the same reason you cannot drive a car. These simple and primitive vehicles maintain a robust society and keep the family together. We had an amazing guide who told a lot of interesting details. For example, there is such a practice as shunning. If one of the members of the society deliberately violated the rules, then the whole community bans him or her. They will not work with this person and wouldn't even talk. The house itself has all the necessary amenities. Yes, they are not connected to the electricity. But this does not mean that they do not use energy or appliances that need power. There is a refrigerator and lamps and all of it works on batteries, which in turn are charged from a generator or attention from solar panels installed on the roof, as for example in this house. They seem to have missed one stage of civilization in the form of wired electricity and immediately stepped into the future with pure solar energy. And the reason for the rejection of wired electricity is very simple. It is the desire to be independent from the outside world. All of you, of course, are aware that in the choice of clothing, Amish are the purest example of minimalism. Nothing fancy, simple fabrics, monochromatic colors, and only the necessary shoes. But let's go back to this shot. This is a wardrobe, or closet. Clothes are stored like this, on the wall. 
it is convenient, of course, to keep everything in sight, but the main reason is that such an organization will not encourage you to own too many things, as a large closet would. It might be a bittersweet memory for some, but I think all of you will remember a similar room. This is a real functioning school. Amish schools are legally recognized in the United States. Usually it is just a one-room school with one class and one teacher in all basic subjects where 25 to 30 children study for eight years. Further education is considered optional or even harmful. The Amish believe that higher education can harm Christian beliefs, and on this matter, they are certainly right. And what happened next? I would have never even thought about it in my entire life. I ended up in a buggy with a driver from the Amish community who happily engaged in a conversation. I should say that it is rather unsafe to ride buggies in traffic conditions. The sounds of cars scare horses and forget even about a left turn. So my buggy driver Lyle told me that for the winter time he and his family were going to their house in Florida. My naive and obvious question was how you'll ride horses from here all the way to There's Florida? Uh, every week, there's a bus goes down. The bus Monday, goes, it goes down to Florida, okay. Yeah, Monday is at noontime, we get on the bus right at our back door, and uh, we get down to Sarasota on Tuesday morning, around 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, on a bus to Sarasota. Got it. On the way, I saw many farms, found out that in standard families there usually are three to four children, but there also are families with seven to eight children. And I managed to get my new Amish friend tired of my questions. Yes. What do they learn in school? Oh, they have the public curriculum, yeah. What subjects do they learn? Oh, they have math and history and geography and reading. And I also asked about incidents and crime rate in their village. No, not much. Not, not much? much? No, very little, yeah. This, is, this should be a safe place for you here. But you get in the cities, I don't know what's in the cities, you know, you got all these farmers moving in and, mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to work and then they, yeah, but out here in the country, we don't have any crime out here. Previously, Lyle worked with furniture. Now he's a buggy driver, and I don't know if he lied, but he said that all these questions from tourists don't bother him. And when the conversation got to the topic of working online, well, I know, I know, I know what that means. That means that you can take your work with you, and just uh, you know, log in. Yeah, so and here I began to tell in great details about all the wonders of remote working and how it works and that you can be anywhere in the world and continue to do your you job. You connect with people through through this network and that, that's how you work. Yeah. And you call it. that easy, we call it complicated. <laughs> Good one. On the way, Lyle also showed me houses of the Mennonites, they're on a fancier side with garages and cars, and houses of the Amish, they seem to be more simple. But as someone who's seen post-Soviet countries and quite a few neighborhoods around the world, I can say that my understanding of the word simple turned out to be a difficult to hear. Actually, it is wrong to put an equal sign between simplicity and poverty. They're Amish millionaires, but you will never know about this, because they live a simple lifestyle by choice. Because of their values and beliefs, and wear the same one-color shirt, not because they're poor, but because everyone is equal and there's no reason to show off in this world. Happiness is in simplicity. Here is a question. Do Amish register their buggies? Well, you know, like we register cars and get a license plate. Amish did try to pass some regulations with the DMV for buggies, but the DMV said that, no, no, we have enough problems with the vehicles, we don't need to deal with your horses. So there you go, they declined. And uh, Amish, they have their own regulations. They put the lights on their buggies so that you see them at night when you drive. They put some stickers on the back, like this vehicle stops often or pass wide or things like that. So they have their own, um, they have their own regulations. We are in Kitchen Cattle Village. This is an area specifically created for 
tourists. There are plenty of gift shops, you can buy some souvenirs. Products made by Amish, furniture, soap and all kinds of canned goods and yummy things from bakery. My video about Amish from Ohio raised a lot of questions about how do they do business and how they work, because their websites and all shops use technology and credit cards and logistics and other business questions need to be addressed by phone or email. So nothing prevents the Amish from owning a business or having their own store like this and hiring people who are not Amish. Those people will make a website and will be engaged in online marketing and will manage everything related to technology and communications. Well, their traditional activities, farming, construction, furniture making, sometimes require long trips to the workplace. And in this regard, some families even acquired the most primitive phone that is kept in a house in a black box in case of an emergency. So that, say, you can contact the husband or rather his employer on the other side of the city. And then we all are a bit of hypocrites. We come up with systems and create seemingly ideal stories, but in practice, we try to follow them at least 80% of the time and it doesn't always work out and it's okay. We are just people and culture, traditions and faith tend to change. I think it would be a great idea to stop by some Amish restaurant for lunch. I thought to find some restaurant here in this village, but I'd like to find something authentic, something real, something actually Amish. And finding authentic things in an area for tourists is never a good idea. So what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna go back to the actual Amish village and we'll try to find something there. for a place to eat and came across this farmer's market where the Amish sell their produce and authentic products, dresses and souvenirs and there also are a couple of bars with food. But after a quick run through the menu and looking around the bar it's clear that everything is here for visitors, American sandwiches and burgers. By the way, the parking lot here is jam-packed with cars from literally all states. Well, I went on looking for authenticity and eventually found this restaurant. All right, I got coffee and water for now, but we're gonna go see what they have. I don't know how Amish it is. It probably is a mixed cuisine, American and Amish. I feel like I'm somewhere in my grandma's kitchen in Kiev. There is chicken, mashed potatoes, meatballs, cabbage rolls, pasta and pickles and beans. And a whole shelf full of desserts. I think the Amish would love it in Kiev. Alright, I guess it's time to wrap up and what I wanted to say that it doesn't cease to amaze me how this is even possible in modern America. I mean also if you look at Amish culture, the Amish society right now, they're also evolving, they're also modernizing and it is a slow process but if you look at solar panels and black box with a cell phone that they keep in a house in case of emergencies or things like that or even um, credit card processing technology um, for the cashier at the store. So little things like that and I guess no matter how conservative you are we all have to agree that these things are just simply convenient to use in our day-to-day -day life. But also we all might learn a thing or two from Amish such as value community, family and simplicity above all else. Of course, there might be social issues and as in any closed society, I'm sure if you dig deeper, you could find many skeletons in the closet. But this is a big topic for a separate story. In general, Lancaster is very interesting and it will take at least four to five days to see everything. Now, here's a bonus for those who watch this video till the end. Have you ever seen an Amish cat? Well, now you've seen everything. See you soon. Bye.